Yeah, hello, this is Alberto Bocanegra. Um, you probably saw the article on Oi and on the Tribune. They didn't bother to interview me. They just wrote an article based on a police report. I'm right now fighting for my life and I'm not talking about the gun charge. I discharged a firearm to protect my father, who's 70 years old this month. I shot the firearm to protect my brother and to protect myself. Right now I'm fighting for my life. I have leukemia. I have a very aggressive type of leukemia. It's called acute myeloid leukemia. 15,000 people get it each year around the world. It's a, it's a disease a senior citizen get and I'm 38 years old. The leukemia comes from the bone. So I have basically have bone and blood cancer. I'm gonna get a transplant most likely at the end of the month. I did not need to deal with this crazy man ramming my car just because I beeped at him because he was stopping in the middle of a three lane going north. I was going to the hospital to get blood. To get blood, not to give. To give blood and platelets. Platelets are the thing that makes you bl your blood clot. I wasn't going to share this with anyone. This was very personal to me. The chances of me surviving is 40%. And this evil man stopped and drove around me and blocked all three lanes and ran out. And he was about to pull something out of his pants. I don't know what it was. I wasn't going to wait to find out. The police officers were surprised that the guy was there. I, wasn't, I, was, press, well, I was asking to press charges because he was using his vehicle as a weapon. And then he runs out to my car. I had a carry concealed weapon. I've never been arrested. I had a, to get a carry concealed weapon, being Latino in Chicago, is almost impossible. I got arrested. Right away, they uh, took me to Mercy Hospital. I was there from 11 a.m. to 12 midnight, which was a good thing. I waited that long for blood and platelets. I'm surprised I'm here talking to you guys. I actually... Police officers were very, very nice to me. They even told me that he was surprised that the guy was there at the police station, that he's a known drug dealer and a known leader of a, a street gang. He didn't want to tell my brother what street gang he was in. They, uh, the city of Chicago now, they have my vehicle impounded. And they, they're saying that I have an assault weapon because I had, I have a nine millimeter Smith and Wesson shield. If you know about firearms, you know that the largest magazine that our firearm has is 10 rounds, which you can only have 10 rounds in, in the gun. But I have a 10 round in my handgun and I have uh, the, the smaller one, which has six rounds in it. And they're trying to say, because it's over 10 rounds, it's an assault weapon. So they're comparing it to an AK-47, AR-15, or, or a Glock with a 30-round magazine. That was the reason I didn't buy a Glock. Why? Because it doesn't have a safety, and you could easily get a humongous a magazine for it. I don't need all of that. A lot of people... My political opposition, which are the usual George Cardenas, Raymond Lopez, are having a field day. They're the ones that call the Tribune. Why would the Tribune care about me? Right now, the last thing that I'm worried about is this gun charge. Why? Because they're going to throw it away. I've never been arrested. I've never been handcuffed. And... I got treated like like a criminal, like if I did something wrong. What's the purpose of a carry concealed 
to protect your family if you cannot use it and you get treated like a like a criminal after you protect your family. Tell me that. Chicago has some of the most strictest gun laws in the city of, in the United States of America. It's not right what the city's doing. And I already talked to my attorney and we're gonna win our case easily. They're gonna drop the charges, give me back my handgun, give me back my carry conceal. And quite frankly, go, we might take the city to the Supreme Court. More people that are law abiding citizens to have firearms, I think the crime rate will drop. I know there are a lot of anti-gun people in the city, but look at other major cities where people, law-abiding law citizens like myself, have guns. they rather not do a crime because a criminal is going to think, well, that guy might have a gun. I don't know what that guy was trying to do. He was trying to harm my family. He was trying to kill my family. He was trying to kill me. The only one that should be dying out of everybody in my family is me. I'm about to go and get that stem cell transplant. It's gonna be very painful. It's gonna do one or two things. It's gonna save my life. or it's gonna kill me. And I'm not gonna see 40 years old. My aunt trying to call for me, calling from New Mexico. I said I wasn't gonna get emotional, but when you're receiving a lot of chemotherapy, your hormones go off, you know, get all emotional. I protected my family. I did what was right. I've always done what was right. And the, the same thing happened again. The only difference is I would have called the police right away. But I was rushing to get blood in me. If not, I would have died. I've lost, you can see it in my face. I lost I lost all my hair, grew back a little bit. Um, I shaved, I, well, kind of, you know, the hair grew back, but it was falling apart as well, which I really don't care, it's hair. This is the most intimate time I've ever shared on Facebook. I never share things they never shared personal problems with me because they try to be strong.